and hello welcome again everyone to this video of uh, open foam all right so uh, this video I want to kind of wrap up the instability issue okay uh, by showing you uh, something I mean uh, we discussed in the last video that uh, one possible reason some of the possible reasons for instabilities they are found in the differences between buoyant businesque pimple foam and buoyant pimple foam one of them was the use of internal energy or enthalpy and the other one was the density as you keep seeing the term rho pop up the rho term pop up over um, in uh, both energy and the um, momentum equation or the u equation so we are trying to um, do something about that okay we're trying to do something about that all right so what can we do to you know eliminate uh, uh, H and E as a problem we chose the more stable of the two we chose internal energy in constant uh, thermal physical properties so okay I already uh, specified the energy used here to be the sensible internal energy uh, okay so the other thing is um, that can be causing instability is the uh, use of a variable density here so what we can do okay what we can do here is to eliminate that as a problem okay so we try to debug by uh, setting the density to be constant and how do we do that okay so this uh, equation of state we normally have is the polynomial uh, this is a polynomial equation of state all right so instead of having um, a temperature density vary with temperature I'm going to stop that from occurring occurring and uh, I'm just going to delete all of this so one two so one two three four zeros here so there'll be eight coefficients the first of these coefficients is the constant all right so um, you'll have a just to refresh your memory maybe I should use a green color this time the purple is a little bit uh, hard to see a little darker so let me use green okay so all right so normally you okay let me do this normally you have density like this so uh, you have C1 plus C2T plus C3T squared plus okay plus dot 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 okay all the way until uh, c8 and t to the seventh okay so this is how the polynomial thing works if you get rid of temperature dependence all the rest of the coefficients will be zero and only uh, if you want a constant density you just set the c1 to be your density and that will be a fixed density how much then should the density be okay we can take a look Roughly, uh, based on our uh, hot sphere in oil, we use our Daltham uh, case, and we see that around 300 to 500 Kelvin, your density is, I mean, you, you give or take, is about 950, 1050, that sort of density. Now, of course, uh, doing this, uh, you take out the effect of natural convection altogether because density doesn't change therefore there's no buoyancy effect that changes with temperature so that's something you have to be very mindful about but uh, let's say let's say our average temperature is around 400 degrees Kelvin and the density here I mean if you ignore this uh, thing okay I'll shift it down here okay 400 Kelvin to be our average temperature uh, if we take that to be our average temperature our density will be around 900 or so kg per meter cube so let's take that as our uh, constant density to be about around 900 kg per meter cube so I'm just going to do uh, that 900 or 950 920 930 uh, I'll just give 930 somewhere around there okay so that's the idea I just roughly read off the graph but most importantly is that this uh, density is um, constant okay important thing is that you have constant density okay so that will eliminate uh, will try to help us uh, find what this uh, error is okay so that's that's the part I want you to zoom in the rest doesn't uh, don't really need to worry too much about that 
All right. Uh, then you you have uh, what I'm doing here is that originally I have a temperature uh, var uh, var varying density, a density that varies with temperature. Okay. Uh, I can actually just and because this is an entry, a data entry. I can just uh, add another data entry and this will actually just replace whatever is over here. So actually doing doing things like this, uh, OpenFoam will not uh, see this entry here, it will just read off this entry. Much like how you do MATLAB or Python or C++ where you define a variable, for example a equals 1, and then you, you, type, uh, you type another line of code saying a equals to 2. So the the solver or Python or whatever code, uh, C++, whatever you have it, it will forget that A equals to 1 and it will just replace the value of A to become 2. So that's what I'm doing here. It, wo it works exactly the same way. Okay, so now, okay, now uh, I just uh, changed that, con uh, okay, I changed the density to constant and let's see what happens. Okay, I removed the 0 0.01 and let's try buoyant pimple foam and let's see whether there's any difference here. So it will solve, it will solve. Uh, okay, it will take a while to solve. So give it, give or take a few minutes, but you will see actually the effect is quite remarkable. There is a noticeable increase in, uh, what do you call that? There's a notable, noticeable uh, increase in stability as you can see here so normally it will crash after two or three iterations but you can see that by by the time we go to the third iteration we have a stable we are we are reaching like a stable uh, a stable kind of a state of affairs you can see here most of the the iterations solve within two pimple iterations and they converge very very much faster than they used to and you see that uh, the current number here, the maximum current number here is stable. We don't, we don't get negative temperatures or anything like that. So we see, actually, the, it seems that the problem here uh, with the buoyant pimple foam solver is that uh, when you have this kind of uh, sharp corners and geometries, uh, your issue becomes uh, such that, oh, um, the density seems to vary a lot and that will cause this instability so let's let's uh roughly roughly try and explain what's going on okay so probably uh due to some uh temperature fluctuation that will actually affect the density okay when you temperature change density will change and when density change your your velocity and your energy will change as well. So let's say you have an error in temperature. Uh, error in temperature will result in an error in density. An error in density will then result in an error in the momentum equation and the energy equation. And when you have an error in the energy equation and the momentum equation, so uh, it can actually feedback, can you, have, you can have a feedback Okay, you have a feedback, so uh, you have e extra error, extra error that is going to be feed, uh, uh, fed back into the temperature uh, thing. So now your temperature is going to have bigger errors, and that's going to have a bigger error in density, and it's going to have a bigger error in these two. That's why uh, all of a sudden you have very big errors in velocity, so your Curon number explodes, and you have... Uh, very big errors in the energy equation. So your delta T goes crazy, right? Your delta T goes crazy. Now, now that we have cancelled the, the effect of uh, uh, temperature on density, we have a constant density here, all right? We have a constant density here, and we see that the effects are incredibly remarkable. As we can see here, the... the um, the solver becomes all of a sudden very stable okay all of a sudden it becomes very very stable okay so we can go and look at the salon poly heat exchanger 
and you can see it's gone up to the third time step. So this, this is actually a very significant uh, thing, uh, probably a common problem in a buoyant pimple foam. So, uh, so let's see, where's the Salome Poly Heat Exchanger? We take a look at the, let's take a look at the case here. You can see that uh, the pressure is as such, it's about 3.9 times 10 to the 6. Uh, let's see the temperature. Okay, we see a slice plot. Okay, slice plot. Okay, so you see the pressure doesn't really... Uh, again, you don't have the sharp spots in pressure profile. Take a look at the temperature and you see that the temperature is, you know, nicely at about 500-ish. You can take a look at the velocity as well. Okay, velocity doesn't, you know, explode or anything like that, like we saw before. Uh, we see, we see uh, roughly a, a good result. Okay, you see roughly a good result. Of course, near the corners, you have uh, velocity getting higher, which is, which is fine because, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's where you usually have... Uh, yeah, usually uh, there's a sharp corner and you know the velocity profile there is not not so even. There's a sudden change in velocity because the direction changes. Therefore, um, you're going to have uh, uh, changes in velocity there, sharp changes in velocity. That's why uh, sharp changes in direction. That's why I think your velocity magnitude will also increase. Okay, so most of the time here in this uh, in these bells, so to speak, or these hemispheres, the velocity will be at its lowest because the cross-sectional area is the biggest. Then you have intermediate velocities in the tubes here because um, you have a decent amount of cross-sectional area when you add everything up. Okay, so this is the expected velocity profile, and we see till now, we see till now the solver is still running at a uh, fourth time step and we see that the coron number does not even blow up or anything like that. So uh, that kind of helps us to see hey where, where is this error coming from and what we can do to you know narrow narrow down uh, this error and usually uh, we can see but that by uh, you know, uh, looking I mean, it's uh, there's no set procedure to do errors, but uh, to to solve errors and debug. But uh, by doing by doing this uh, analysis, we can we can see that you no, know, probably the the biggest issue is this density. We looked at literature first, and we saw that in literature, uh, open foam, uh, buoyant business pimple foam was used to do a jet impingement case where we saw very sharp changes in direction of the fluid all right and the velocity as well uh, we saw buoyant building has been performed was able to solve for that so buoyant, uh, we try to make buoyant pin perform behave like that and the way to do it was to compare the two solvers the source code of both solvers and we saw the two major differences were how the energy equation was solved and the uh, involvement of density okay now, now that we have seen that this actually works for the simpler case of buoyant pimple foam, okay, now that we've seen it work for buoyant pimple foam, the hope, of course, is that it works for CHT multi-region foam as well. So we, we see this heat exchanger. Okay, uh, I'm going to try the experimental one pipe heat exchanger. Okay, so again, my my uh everything is laid out here so i'm going to go to constant i'm going to sh the shell region i'm going to try to put the same things here i'm going to make row the i'm going to make row constant for both shell and tube okay i'm going to leave it as enthalpy for now we shall see if the thing is stable okay So again, I'm going to give or take around 9.30. Everything else will be zero. So one, two, three. Okay, everything else I do not change. And we'll see uh, what effect this has. 
so I'll just do the tube side as well and I'll do exactly the same thing and let's see whether this actually helps it become stable okay I'm going to save and quit and then I want to run CHT multi region foam <clears throat> so I can see now now the now the thing is actually solving pretty well I uh, uh, we don't see a uh, current number explosion all right and then you take and take a look uh, now it's actually the Delta T is fine we don't see current number explosion uh, and it's solved for way longer than what it was before okay you can see that the Delta T kind of remains stable at around 5 or 6 times 10 to the minus 5 okay and the current number can be kept at 0 0.5 you see this uh, this actually makes it a lot more stable and up till now it is still running okay 4 times 10 to the 5 and it's relatively stable compared to what we had before you can see that the, the increase in stability is pretty dramatic for this case okay so um, now there are some drawbacks to this of course we actually took out the whole effect of natural uh, convection uh, at the cost of you know making I mean the at least you have a soft case it's still better with a uh, soft case without natural convection it is still better than you know uh, no case at all all right you still have some semblance of uh, trying to calculate heat transfer so um, that this this actually um, you know removes the whole thing but it makes this it makes this case solvable even with the coarse uh, tetrahedral mesh so that's actually very important all right that's very uh, actually very very important so and you see that this uh, it's, it's still pretty stable in general okay so uh, I guess uh, I'm gonna leave it as that you can see that this this uh, the solver was a lot more stable than what we had before where you know it saw it saw for a while and it crashed in a few time steps all right so um, yeah I'll, I'll leave it for now uh, you know take a while before I just uh, put all these changes on github because it was a lot of notes lots of lots of things to take note of but yeah you you can see that uh, you can see that this uh, even at up to time equals 0 0.05 it is still pretty stable the, you don't see coron number exploding you don't see the time step getting too small like to the minus 6 or minus 7 it just remains around 4.3 times 10 to the minus 5 as you can see here okay and if we go to the latest time step it's, it's still pretty okay it does not dramatically drop okay so we can see that um, yeah, this this is what uh, I kind of wanted to uh, tell you about, um, and hopefully uh, there are other ways of controlling this uh, error, you know, by changing the density or the way density is calculated, or even looking taking a closer look at those solvers. But if you can live without, uh, you know, natural convection effects, even though they do uh, impact the heat transfer rates. Uh, then I, I suppose this, this approach will be good enough for you for use in openform.org and in CHD multi-region form. Okay, so I guess that's all I have for you today. Uh, at, least, at least we have some semblance of a working working simulation and that's comforting to, to know rather than you know having lots of crashes. And yeah, I guess I guess uh, that that that's that will be it. And take a look. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, this this is what we had before, and then this is what we have after. Very noticeable change. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.